Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we once and for all definitively answer the question on how many suits a man needs. The answer is between one and a hundred. There is no simple number. It all depends on your environment, your budget, and other considerations that you have to make. So that's not very helpful. And because of that, we put together four different profiles of different men with different needs and requirements. And we walk you through exactly what kind of suit you need, what style, what color, what fabric. So you always look the part and you have exactly the right suit for the right occasion. Of course, some people think, is it really necessary to still own a suit in this day and age? And I have to unequivocally say, Yes, we all go to interviews, we go to weddings, we go to funerals, maybe sometimes galas or evening events where a suit is required. Also, it's not a good idea to just borrow a suit last minute because that will always go wrong and an ill-fitting suit, even if it's a $10,000 suit, will just look really bad and disadvantageous. For example, just the other day, I got a call from an entrepreneur friend who had to attend an evening event that required at least a suit. Now, he didn't have one. He had a sports jacket and he just thought he can walk into a mall, buy a suit, and that'll be it. The problem is a suit always requires tailoring and alterations, which in turn take time. And so it pays to always have at least one suit in your closet that fits you at any given point in time. So what are the four archetypes of men? First, the person who normally never wears a suit. Second, the person who sometimes wears a suit. Three, the person who wears a suit very regularly. And then four, the suit lover who doesn't really need suits, but who simply loves them for their own sake. So one, the man who normally never wears a suit. You're a student, maybe an IT professional, or just in a job where a suit is not required of you, ever. Maybe you work in a very casual office or you work from home, but a suit is just never something that has come up. In that case, I suggest you invest in one dark suit. I suggest you go with a single-breasted suit in a medium to light weight that you can wear year-round. So I suggest between 270 and 300 grams or about 10 ounces. You also should invest in a worsted wool, which is a very fine wool, but it's very different than a flannel wool. And to understand the differences, I suggest you check out our guides on the website. So why do you need a dark suit and not something lighter? Well, usually the only events that require you to wear a suit are in the evening or they're quite formal, such as a wedding or a funeral. And in that case, dark is always your friend. Because of that, I suggest a dark navy suit or a dark gray or charcoal suit. Pretty much between those two colors, you should choose do not go with a black suit because black is harder to combine with other items and in a suit, it looks bad when combined with blue tones, which are very predominant in menswear. To learn more about why black is an overrated color in classic menswear, please check out this video here. If you choose a suit that is too heavy, it will drape well, but you'll be too warm in the summer. And if it's too lightweight, it will wrinkle too easily and you'll look disheveled. Because of that, invest in a solid dark suit. Make sure you get notched lapels, not peak lapels with your single breasted one because it's very traditional. I suggest you go with two buttons. You can also go with three buttons that roll on two. It's a very classic silhouette. For your trousers or pants, I suggest you go with either a pleated front or a flat front and cuffs because the weight of the cuffs pull down the pants. If you want to, you can also add a matching vest or waistcoat, which allows you to wear a three-piece suit, which is more formal. You can also skip the vest and just have a two-piece suit and it simply gives you more options, but it doesn't cost a whole lot more to upgrade. Unless you go with a custom tailored suit, you'll always have to have alterations. They'll cost you usually between 50 and $200, depending on where you live and what extent you need in alterations. You should check out the video on how a suit should fit so you buy something that's right in the first place that with minimal alterations can yield a very respectable fit and look. Now let's talk about the second type of man. 
you are someone who rarely wears a suit, you maybe work at a very casual office, but every once in a while when you have client contact or a business event, you'll need to get out some suits. In that case, it pays to have at least three suits, otherwise it'll look like you only have one suit and you wear the same outfit over and over again, which is never advantageous. So the three suits you should invest in are one, a dark navy suit and two, a dark charcoal suit. I suggest you get one of them double-breasted because it's more formal and another one single-breasted with notch lapels because it's less formal. Ideally, you want maybe the navy suit to be double-breasted because you can wear it as a blazer separately. With those two suits, you're covered for summer and spring weather, as well as for fall and for winter. They work very well, they're unpretentious, they're very professional, and you'll always be well-respected and looked apart. For the gray flannel, you want something a little heavier, about 350 to 400 grams. For the worsted navy suit, you go something a little lighter, about 270 to 300 grams, just like in the other suit before. The third suit to invest in for you is something that's a little more casual. It's not as formal and dark, and brown tones are ideal for that. It could be a glen check with an overplaid, it could be a small houndstooth, or just something that's a little lighter in color that has a pattern. Of course, to learn more about tweed, you can check out this guide, and for flannel and worsets, check out these guides. The third type is the man who wears a suit to work every day. Because of that, you need a larger rotation of suits because you can always get them stained and if you let your suits rest, they will actually last you longer. No, but I don't mean that they just last longer because you wear them less frequently, but let's say you have a rotation of 10 suits. They will last you about twice as long as if you would buy an individual suit, wear it out and buy nine more. Yes, you invested the same money in the same number of suits, but with the rotation that will last you just longer. That aside, they also look better, and that's the reason we wear a suit in the first place. So if you are a VP, an executive, or a white collar professional, suits are your office attire, are your uniform, are the wardrobe that you have to wear. For most men in this category, it's enough to own 10 business suits because that's a two week rotation. With 10 suits, different shirts, ties, and shoes, you can create many outfits and it will never look like you're just repeating the same one over and over again. If you're just starting out, you may not be able to afford 10 quality suits right from the bat. And because of that, it pays to slowly build up that rotation, starting with the most versatile solid ones that we mentioned earlier. So what are those 10 suits? First of all, again, the charcoal flannel suit, maybe in single-breasted, or the navy bursted suit in double-breasted. They're just staples and classics that you can wear over and over again. So if the first suit was navy and single-breasted with notch lapels, the third suit should be navy with peak lapels and double-breasted. You always wanna maximize the different kind of looks you have and being able to choose between those two can just make a difference in how it's perceived. Peak lapels look more powerful and are more formal. Notch lapels are a little less formal. The fourth suit should be a notch too oversized glen check, which is a very traditional menswear pattern. Sometimes you can see them with an overblad in a color such as blue or pink. If you want versatility, I suggest to go with a more muted overplaid or without one in the first place. Also, I think it's a good idea to go with a worsted fabric here, and whether it's single-breasted or double-breasted is up to your taste. Ideally, you have an even number in your wardrobe, but of course you can choose if you prefer double-breasted, you can have maybe seven double-breasted and three single-breasted, or the other way around. Some people even go all single-breasted or all double-breasted. It's a preference. I suggest though that you have at least one double-breasted and at least one single-breasted suit in your wardrobe. That way, you're just more flexible. The fifth suit should be a medium gray, it can either be a solid or a fresco, or maybe a herringbone pattern. Suit number six should be either a lighter gray or a lighter shade of blue. Again, it can be in a fresco if you're in a warmer climate or something with a little more texture, such as a shark skin or a hop sack. Suit number seven should be striped. Generally, I suggest to go with a lighter stripe on a dark background, a very 
popular one is a white or off-white stripe on navy. Sometimes you also see gray, but navy is definitely a classic. If you go with a double-breasted pinstripe or rope stripe suit, a lot of people will have associations with the 30s or some gangsters, so keep that in mind when you make your selection. And you want more subdued stripes, I suggest to go with chalk stripes, which are less pronounced, softer, but very elegant, sophisticated, and classic. Suit number eight should be a brown suit. If you want to wear it more to casual outings, I suggest to go with a medium brown, maybe with a herringbone pattern, something that is distinctly different from your dark office suits. On the other hand, if you still want to wear it to the office, maybe a charcoal brown suit with a needle hat or a pinpoint is the better choice. The ninth suit to invest in should even be more casual. If you live in a colder climate, a tweed suit is really perfect. If you live in a warmer climate, again, I suggest to go with a fresco suit or a linen suit or a cotton suit. In terms of colors, you can be a little more daring. You can go with something in green or petrol blue or maybe cream or beige. Keep in mind that lighter colored suits are more prone to stains and adjust your selection accordingly. Last but not least, suit number 10 should be a tuxedo because if you're in this position, chances are you'll have to go to evening events where black tie is a dress code and then a tuxedo is the right thing to wear. To learn more about black tie, please check out our in-depth black tie guide and for a selection of our evening wear accessories, please check out our shop here. The fourth type of men is the suit lover. At this point, we can't talk about need anymore and the sky is the limit. It's all about how many suits you want and the limiting factor is likely the amount of closet space you have. You guessed it, that's me and I'm a suit lover. My goal has always been to build a complete wardrobe, not just for suits, but overall. So I have a complete white tie outfit. I have several black tie outfits. I have several morning coat outfits. I have a stroller outfit. I have suits, overcoats, and so forth. And to me, dressing and clothing and suits is just a hobby. Of course, it's also a big part of my business, so it's very easy to justify more purchases. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other suit videos and subscribe to our channel so new stuff like this comes right to your inbox. In today's video, I'm wearing a double-breasted flannel suit, which is gray with a white window pane. It's a fabric from Vitale Barberis Canonico that was custom made in the suit for me. It has a very high buttoning point, and because of that, you don't see much of my tie. Here, I'm combining it with a white dress shirt with double cuffs, as well as a white linen pocket square from Fort Belvedere. And as you can see, this is a quite loud suit, and because of that, I chose to tone down the accessories. This is a blue matter tie with light blue and red tones. The red is picked up in my cufflinks, and my shoes, on the other hand, are black to simply tone down the entire outfit. That being said, there are actual two-tone Belmoral boots, black calf leather combined with black suede, and I chose a gray pair of Fort Belvedere bootlaces that work with a suit to tie it all together. For all the accessories, including the red carnelian cufflinks with sterling silver, the tie, the pocket square, and the socks with clocks, please check out our shop here. <laughs>